Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to set up our brick cracking system. Um, so let's jump straight in. So here we are, we're exactly where we left off. We've just configured our masked noise and we jumped into a for each loop. So let's make a start on this. What we need to do is set up a system whereby the end user can dial in a probability for uh, whether or not the brick's gonna be cracked. So at a value of one, every brick in the wall will have some kind of crack in it. Yeah, and then likewise goes down accordingly. So we could set that up with a wrangle node. So let's drop down an attribute wrangle within our for each node and make start, okay? So just like before, we need to take advantage of those meta attributes, those detail attributes on the meta import node. So I'm gonna click make meta import node and bring in that into my second input, oh, well, so my index one input of my attribute wrangle. Uh, and this is a parameter, so we'll call it a uh, crack ratio and give it that gold color, all right? So let's jump in. The first thing we need to do is to generate a random number, okay, um, based on a random seed. And also what we need to do is change this over to, rather than working on points, this time we just want to work on primitives. So I'm gonna change this over to primitives. It's exactly the same, but rather than iterating over individual points, it's going to iterate over primitives, okay? So let's build that random number again using exactly the same technique we've used before. We'll create a variable called crack ratio, seems to work. And then we'll use that familiar rand expression based on the detail attribute on the first input coming in and it's the iteration attribute uh, that we're interested in index zero multiplied by some crazy random number and there we go all right okay so this expression now should be very familiar to you uh, working within for each loops if you want to generate a different random seed based on um you know, this detail attribute, okay? And don't forget to end it with a semicolon. There we go, so that's our ratio. So it's going to assign a value to every single primitive currently being processed, uh, and it'll be the same value, so that kind of works for us. The next thing we want to do is to actually create an integer attribute that we can test further down the line. So I'm gonna type i for integer, at will specify a new attribute and we'll call this one cracked and initialize it with a value of zero okay the next thing we need to do is to jump inside an if statement so here we're going to test if the current crack ratio is greater than a channel we're going to create and pass on to the user called channel uh, crack probability Okay, so if the assigned crack ratio value is higher than the probability, then we'll get into this if statement. And then all we need to do is just set that attribute that we created cracked to be one. Crack ration, not quite, crack ratio, there we go. All right, so we've got that attribute now on our geometry. And if we jump over to the geometry spreadsheet, and look at primitives. You can see we've got this cracked attribute. So all these primitives here are gonna be filtered into the cracked uh, group, okay? So we need to initialize this by clicking on this little button. And I'm just gonna put this at 0.5. So 50% of the bricks are going to get um, processed to have cracks. So what we need to do next is split off those bricks based on that attribute. So I'm gonna put down a split node, okay? Jump up back to my scene view. And in the group field here, we want to reference that attribute that we just created. And if it equals one, then it's going to come out of this output. And if it doesn't equal one, then it's gonna get passed through. Okay, so with that split in place, the next thing we need to do is to create our cutting geometry or our fracturing geometry, however you want to uh, call it. There's tons of ways to do it. Um, I'm gonna go with the old school Voronoi fracture. 
Okay, and this takes two inputs. It's going to take some geometry to fracture, so we can take the output of the first split. Okay, and it also takes some points for the Voronoi cells. Okay, so we need to generate some geometry um, to actually fracture it. So we can do that with a scatter node. Okay, and again, come out of that first input into the scatter node and put the display flag on. Okay, so now what you can see that's done is given us a bunch of points based on the geometry of that brick. That's way too many. That's going to give us a very, very densely kind of chopped up mesh. So we don't want a thousand. We want, say, let's set it at three. Okay, and then we'll plug that into our Voronoi fracture. Okay, and then put the display flag on. And as you can see, it's kind of randomly chopped up that and that brick four is in, a, in a quite an interesting way. And if we come back to the scatter node, we can change the global seed to get a bunch of different looks. Okay. And because all these because all these bricks exist in a different part of world space, they'll all have their own seed anyway, because the points are generated differently. But we will come back and add some more variety to this and a bit more control to stop it looking uh, too homogenous. Um, okay. So once we've set that up, we can merge the two streams together. So we've got our cracked bricks and coming back up to the split node on the second output this time, these are our non-cracked bricks. So I'm just gonna tidy my network view up a little bit just so it makes a bit more sense. So our non-cracked bricks are going to come out of that second input into the merge. Okay. And then we'll pass that to the output of our four each. All right. And then when we bring the display flag down, you can see we've got kind of a random 50% distribution of cracked and non-cracked bricks. And if we come back to our crack ratio or crack probability, we can dial that in to, and it's actually going the other way. Um, <laughs> so let's swap that around to be less than crack probability. There we go. So with a crack probability of one, every brick gets cracked, but you know, you might want to dial it down just so you get just a few um, sort of cracked pieces just to again, add to that visual interest um, and sort of just sort of crack up those surfaces a little bit. All right, awesome. So the next thing we want to do when we're sort of rapidly approaching the end of this sort of low polygon build uh, of, of the wall system is just drop down a poly bevel, poly bevel, and take the output of that into our system. And then we'll just dial in a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a bevel on those bricks just to sort of break up those really super sharp super sharp edges and you can see we're starting to get some interesting definition in those cracks and the, and the brick walls and things like that okay um the normals are a little bit funky so if that does bother you you can just put down a normal node put the display flag on and set that over to be weighted by face area and we get back to something more like this which is a lot easier on the eye i think all right cool so that was the cracking system super super simple um if you wanted to, you could promote this global seed parameter to sort of, again, give the user the ability to uh, switch up the sort of the pattern if they don't like it. What you could also do is you could also generate a random number using the meta import node. So you're scattering a random number of points. So rather than just scattering three every single time, you could maybe say scatter between three and five or something like that. Uh, but you could just dial it in what you want to get the look of. So that looks quite cool with five points. Let's dial it down. So yeah, five points looks pretty cool. Gives us a little bit of broken brickwork and a bit of uh, visual interest there. And we've got that crack probability slider working for us. Cool. All right. So in the next video, what we are going to be looking at is generating the high polygon version. So still a lot of processing left to do on these individual bricks. The next task is going to be sort of chipping away at these edges and sort of looking at a procedural way in which we can add more damage and more noise, which again adds to the visual interest um, 
okay so we will do that in the next video if this video has been useful or um you know you learned something please like subscribe do all the youtube things uh it is much appreciated and hopefully i will see you in the next video thanks